Welcome to the new look Kit Plus TV, a weekly show based on the Kit Plus magazine format with industry journalists, students, news, and guests in four sections reflecting your workflow. So first off, you will have noticed we are slightly smaller, squeezed back within a frame of adverts. These are enabling us to bring the show to you each week, and I'm sure you'll find them very relevant. So check them out as they'll change throughout the show. Thanks to those who are supporting us, as well as Media Proxy, who we'll tell you more about later. Yes, and we've a packed show ahead, and you'll get used to the format where we talk to a high-profile industry figure with the full-length discussion being available as a separate video. We'll be giving students a voice in TV Futures, chatting to four guests in each of our four workflow sections, as well as covering news that has been recently uploaded to our press room. And finishing with our Kit Plus Kit Fest topic of the week. Yeah, the industry is changing dramatically right now. So even though we're about 30 miles apart, we will be here in our virtual studio every week for the next three months. And we're really pleased to welcome into the studio as well with us a long-term contributor to the magazine, Dick Hobbs. Stay tuned to meet his guest this week. Thanks, Matt. Today I'm talking to very much the man of the moment, Michael Crimp, the chief executive of IBC. But first, TV Futures. Hello, my name's Ethan. I am originally from just outside Cardiff in Wales, but I've just finished my second year studying television broadcasting at the University of Portsmouth. And I'm here just to give you um, a kind of rough overview of the journey that I've been on so far within the television industry. Um, I'm hoping to share some of my experiences, the amazing experiences that I've had through the course, through some extracurricular activities um, within the university, but also within the industry itself. Um, so when I came onto this course, I came in with the ambition, I've still got the same ambition to work as a multi-camera director for really big um, music and entertainment programmes. My ultimate TV dream is to one day direct the Eurovision Song Contest. Who knows? I think we're a bit off, a bit of a way off there, but who knows? Um, and it's such an exciting course that I've been able to really practice those skills and really learn from the very best. In my first year, I was given the opportunity to direct a short music magazine program. And this year, my second year, I was given the chance to direct something a bit longer. So I've directed a um, half an hour quiz game show. And I was also given the chance to produce some children's TV as well. So a really great range of, of genres and, and formats that I've had the absolute privilege of being able to learn on and being able to develop my skills with. I'm also the director at Portsmouth Football Club where I manage um, up to eight sources, um, four different cameras to bring the match to the big screen in the stadium for the, for the 20,000 fans that go there on a weekly basis. Um, this year I was also working on directing a project for the Home Office with the Maritime Border Force. Um, unfortunately, because of obviously the current climate that we're in, we had to um, postpone, but we're really confident that we're gonna be able to pick up those skills again in the next um, year or two, and, and hopefully we'll be able to deliver the project to them. Um, I've had so many amazing experiences within the television industry itself because of the CV and career guidance that I've had through staff at the University of Portsmouth. Um, and I've got a really great number of credits under my belt as a runner, working on some really amazing productions like Craig David Rock's Big Ben Live on New Year's Eve in London, the EE e. BAFTA Film Awards most recently, and BBC Young Musician, The Voice Kids Producers Store, just to name a few of some of the amazing things that I've had the absolute privilege of being able to work on, um, and some amazing people that I've met through doing that as well. I've also been able to try my hand at presenting, something that I really enjoy and something that I found comes fairly natural to, naturally to me. Um, and that's something that I've been able to develop within the course. Little things like being able to learn how to read off an auto cue, how to use an IFB earpiece to um, and, and kind of cancel out the noise of everybody chatting in a gallery and being able to focus on, on an interview or a piece of camera, whatever that may be. And during this lockdown, I've had the chance to develop some other skills as well, including editing, which um, I've been responsible for editing um, one of my local churches, they, um, they've moved their services to online. So I've had the absolute privilege of being able to, to edit a half hour uh, service or kids TV show, if you like, every week. 
Um, and I've also had a chance to play with some great kit. I'm filming this now on the DJI Osmo 4K, which I'm just having so much fun uh, playing around with. It's absolutely something, <laughs> something great that I can invest my time into, into learning how to use. So I really hope that that's given you a little overview of my journey in the television industry so far. And I really hope there's a journey that will continue for a long time to come. Thanks, Ethan. And thanks for being our first student in this new format. If you want to contact him for any jobs or work experience, then I'm sure he would love to hear from you. And I'm told he comes with glowing references. And just before we join Dick Hobbs with his special guest today, um, if you're a regular viewer of the recent Daily Show, you'll know that we're supported by Media Proxy, who is the global leader for all things compliance. With over 20 years in the business and over 15,000 channels deployed in over 60 countries, they're the trusted partner in the industry for logging, monitoring, and analysis of linear broadcast and OTT. What you may not know is that their leading edge product log server is the only solution to fully support SUMPTE 2022-6 and SUMPTE 2110 sources. Record and monitor uncompressed IP sources, including multiple audio tracks, SCSI messages, and subtitles at a high scale on commodity hardware, and even across virtual environments. And if you're looking to replace your Volucon system, team up with the global leader in compliance. For more information, please check out their website on the link below. Uh, let's hand over to Dick now. And don't forget, you can watch the full length interview he's about to do, which we'll give you a link after this. Michael Crimp, CEO of IBC, thanks very much indeed for joining me. So we've we've been forced to cancel IBC this year. So what's the background to the uh, cancellation? Oh, wow, it's, it's, it's a long story. Um, I guess it all began um, back in uh, February with the, the cancellation of um, Mobile World Congress. I think that's when everybody realized how seriously COVID might um, uh, affect those outside of China. Um, so we started to, to track different scenarios um, at that point in time, and um, it came to a head uh, in in May, I can give you a bit more background of the story if 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 you're interested. I guess some people might might like to know how it unfolded. Yeah, please, please do, please do. Yeah, well, um, I guess uh, an interesting perspective to look at it through is is through the timing of it. I, I think what we saw is that there's a, a natural uh run up to ibc especially if you're an exhibitor you've got four different points where you make commitments as it escalates towards um being fully committed to the show um the last one of those decision making points is, is in july i mean I, our, our logic at the time was uh the, the more time we have um for people to decide the better because the uh, just the general government environment, the understanding of what we were dealing with, a whole raft of things, really. So we set out a plan to try and bring people along on that journey. It was clear that because of the importance of IBC, people would be looking for some leadership from us on it. And we decided our style of leadership quite simply would be to treat people as grown ups in the short term. Um, so what we did was we, we, um, we went back um, to the supply chain and we pushed all of our deadlines so that um, no one had to commit anything to a, to a hotel or a supplier that would uh, um, affect their presence at IBC. So they had all that much time. And then we proactively published our policy so as they came along with us on the journey, they could make their own choices. So what would they get as a refund from IBC? What could we do about commitment dates for some companies who wanted special payment dates? So we kind of went along like that. Uh, what emerged over a um, period of time was, although there was very strong support from the exhibitors and the visitors for doing that, things weren't getting that much clearer. Um, in essence, um, IBC can only take the government advice, talk to um, the RAI and the events industry about how you would interpret that advice and then turn it into the IBC experience. Uh, and in short, by May time, um, it was becoming less clear in a way. Um, the, we decided to 
survey the, the visitors and the exhibitors. Um, the, the visitors were mainly undecided. They wanted to come to IBC. Um, it was like 20% I'm definitely coming. 20% I'm not coming. Everybody else, I want to come, but all these things are getting in the way. So that was one issue. Um, for the exhibitors, uh, and I, I guess this is something um, which we have now, first of all, their timeline, their run into IBC was much longer. I could see it through R&D, but I didn't realize how long the stand booth planning and some of those aspects would take them. So it became to the point where leading people along bit by bit um, to um, have the optimum point in time move forward from July to May because um, people needed that extra time. It was not becoming any clearer and it just seemed to us that if we couldn't call it now uh, as a safe event and we couldn't call it um, as a valuable event, um, it was it was the right decision to cancel the show. Um, we were also aware that as we went forward, people would start commit lots of money to the show and that's not necessarily the best thing for them to spend that money on if we can't deliver the value at the other end. So even simple things like, well, if you have a, um, a 10 metre booth and you're a small company and it's a, a two metre social distancing, how many people can you have on your booth? If you're a big company, you've got 200 people theatre, um, you know, um, and just social interactions, the wearing of masks, the, we know how, how important hospitality is. So for all of those reasons, we thought, look, you know, let's make a clear um, decision to cancel for the, the, the best um, for the industry. And, um, well, all we've had back is, is support for that decision. Michael carried on talking to me for around 20 minutes. Our complete conversation can be found online. The link is on the screen and in the description below this video. Now, back to the studio for more news and guests. Thanks for that. And do go and watch the full interview on our YouTube channel. Dick will be joining us again next week with another leading figure from the industry. In fact, over the next 12 weeks, we've got a great lineup of one-to-one -one interviews for you. So now we come to the four workflow sections that make up our industry. And we'll start with capture and produce. Great. And first in the news is Matthews, who have introduced a full 40 by 40 line of flags and floppies, offering the multitude of benefits for which Matthews is known. This practical size answers the need for gear that's portable enough to travel in a hatchback car and compact enough to work in the nooks and crannies of a tight location. When it comes to cargo, the 40 by 40 dimension easily fits standard shipping limits too. Uh, Moses Engineering, a uh, global leader in real-time camera tracking and remote systems, have announced the launch of U50. Designed and manufactured using, uh, during the lockdown period, the U50 is a heavy-duty remote head that enables camera operators to safely return to work and control the biggest box lenses and heaviest broadcast camera setups all remotely. And AJA Video Systems has announced Key Pro Ultra 12G, a new single-channel 4K Ultra HD recorder and player, or four-channel HD recorder featuring 12G SDI connectivity with a host of unique and powerful features with up to 50 or 60p recording and playback to and from Apple ProRes or Avid DNX HR with flexible connectivity options including 12G SDI, HDMI and optional fiber input and outputs. DPA Microphones introduced the latest addition to its microphone lineup, the 4097 Core Micro Shotgun Mic. This kit is particularly useful for journalists in today's socially distanced world as it allows users to conduct interviews from up to two meters away. And as I'm the one using their product, I think I should introduce our guest in this capture produce section. Uh, we'd like to welcome Sybil and Russ from the Magic Video Box. Uh, thanks for joining us. Why don't you tell us a bit about the product and the recently discovered third use of it? Hi there. Thanks for inviting us. Um, we love the format of your show, actually, so we're delighted to be here. We're going to show you the Magic Video Box, 
which is a box that sits in front of the camera, so the camera is behind here, and it can be any camera. And at the moment, it's in teleprompter mode, but Rust is going to show you how it transforms very quickly into interview mode, and that's when it gets really exciting. Thank you. This is a standard size tablet. Now, to put it into interview mode, unvelcro the hood, lift the box out of the tray, and you'll see the box has got a false bottom. Now, if you turn it sideways, it becomes a false wall. So now you, you simply reattach the Velcro, making sure no light is coming through. And then if you want to light your interview up, <coughs> hello. So that's it. So basically, the person being filmed would be sat there, so you'd be the person being filmed, and you'd have a conversation through the magic video box with Russ, whilst looking directly into the camera lens. And it makes for really intimate footage. Um, it also makes the interview really simple and easy. And people, we've been using it since 2015, and people have said they just love it, even those people who aren't used to being filmed. So, um, so yeah, lockdown happened, obviously, and then um, we had a lot of thinking time and we actually realised, actually, the Magic Video Box also doubles up as a social distancing filming tool. So, basically, because of the 90 degree angle, so the person being filmed is there and the interviewer is there, we've always needed a separator between the two. But now, this has become a bit of a bonus because um, the divider or barrier um, means that the person being filmed and the interviewer aren't face to face. So there is no risk of any airborne transmissions. Um, so yeah, so the person being filmed can feel really comfortable to know that they are so properly social distancing without any risks. Um, and actually we found that the magic video box really makes people really comfortable and unself-conscious. Um, so yeah, that's it. That's our magic video box. It's now three things. It's a teleprompter. It's an, a direct eye contact device. But now it's also a social distancing filming tool. You can find out more in the link below. That's great, guys. Thank you very much for coming on the show. Um, please do check out the link on screen for more information. So on to the next workflow section now with Manipulate and Edit. Synergy have announced TurboCut, a new Adobe CC plugin which significantly accelerates the editing of H.264 and HEVC by utilizing NVIDIA's GPU hardware decoder. This coincides with Adobe's release version 14.2 of Adobe Premiere with several new features added but still missing NVIDIA's hardware accelerated editing and using the NVIDIA GPU for decoding H.264 and HEVC. And EditShare continues its collaboration with Adobe to enhance end-to-end -end remote production and collaborative editing workflows. The integrated solution seamlessly connects editing workflows into a wider media ecosystem with deep metadata tracking and workflow automation to simplify storytelling. Whether on-premise, in a hybrid configuration, or as a complete cloud-based workflow. And uh, let's go now to our guest and uh, welcome John Williams from Soho Editors. Now, John, you're doing uh, training courses online at the moment for obvious reasons. Is this a new initiative or something you've been offering for a while now? So we've been doing live online courses for over a year now. And uh, a couple of years ago, we realized we had a lot of uh, interest from people overseas who couldn't come to the UK offices to do our training. So we wanted to uh, set up a live online training environment where they can have all the live interaction that they have in the classroom, but where they can do it anywhere in the world. And uh, that's taken off, but particularly the last couple of months has become particularly popular. We're training all the major apps, so all the Adobe apps, we're tra training Avid, Final Cut, DaVinci, Cinema 4D, all the, all the courses we offer in the classroom are now uh, live and online. 
and the sessions are all totally interactive so people can ask questions as we go along or if they want to they can send messages in the chat box and we'll deal with that if it's relevant straight away if it's not so relevant we'll deal it at the end of a session we leave um, a good chunk of time at the end of each session for Q&A so if people want to go over things again and it's uh, really as interactive if not more interactive than the classroom uh, traditional classroom training. So what sets SOHO editors apart from other types of training on offer? And are there advantages of online over classroom training? What sets us apart is definitely, it, whether in the classroom or this live virtual online format, is we use uh, industry professionals. We use um, people from our talent agencies, so editors, designers, colorists, directors, uh, we use them, they, they, they will train you how to use the software, but also creatively, they'll train you how to get the best results at the software. They'll train you uh, cutting edge techniques and styles and, and things that are really relevant to the work that you're going to be doing. These these are not pre-recorded videos, so they're all current, they're all on the latest version, they're all up to date. And uh, one great advantage is they're all uh, recorded. So all the sessions, if you come and sit on a course, you'll get access to the entire course that you sat recorded and you can watch it back. So um, over a two, three day course, there's a lot of information to take in. It's very easy just to go back and watch that and think, oh, how did I create that edit? How did I do that design? How did I animate that text? And you can go back and watch it after the course as well. So that's another great advantage. And what's the response been like for these live online courses? It's been really positive, actually. Uh, as I mentioned, we've been offering the live online training for over a year, but it's it's taken off a lot. Um, one extra thing that uh, works quite well is if, if we have someone who gets stuck with something, uh, we can take control of their machine. We can take control of their application. We can see where they went wrong or if needed be, we, we can direct them and show them live on screen. So we don't need any physical contact. It's, it's like in the classroom, you'd be there over the shoulder moving their mouse around. Um, but you can do that all virtually as well, which is which is really fantastic. Um, we definitely offer um, support for those who are struggling at this time. So um, companies or uh, freelancers, there's big discounts available if you want to up skills, if you want to use this time productively and learn some new skills, um, then there's big discounts for you. And uh, you know, these live online courses really are the best of both worlds. So you get fully interactive training delivered wherever you want uh, with the chance to watch it all back afterwards. That's great. Thank you, John. Uh, you can find all the courses from Soho Editors and information on the link that's on screen now. And in Manage and Monitor News, we start with Grass Valley, underlining its leadership in driving innovation through collaboration with the launch of GVX, a council of customers selected from the media industry's most influential technologists and business leaders. This group of key leaders will work closely with Grass Valley executives to move media technology innovation forward in a mutually beneficial fashion, providing the industry with solutions that are perfectly matched with the increasing demands placed on content producers and distributors. Leader Electronics has announced the addition of MaxFall, a Max CLL HDR metadata error logging tools for production studios, post-production suites, and media laboratories working with SUMPTST 2086 metadata to grade high dynamic range video. This new feature complements the recently launched colorometry zone display real-time false color display plugin module. So hopefully you're getting the idea of the format. And we're joined now by someone we always like to catch up with at trade shows. So welcome Paul Glasgow from Marquis Broadcasts. Um, Paul, we usually meet up at shows like IBC. I think last time we met was actually IBC last year. Um, give us a quick update from you guys of what's new. And obviously with the COVID-19 situation going on, how have you guys been uh, adapting to the inevitable consequences that uh, that gives you? Yeah, it's, it's, it's fascinating. And IBC last year seems like a lifetime away. So, uh, you know, a lot of things have, have changed since then. And um, as a software company and services company, uh, we're probably not impacted as much as some of the hardware manufacturers have been because you know it's difficult shipping things and stuff. So it's been it's been quite a, a, 
an experience and um, we've sort of discovered things about our products which we didn't necessarily market very uh, very uh, strongly and for example we make some apps which are sold on the Apple App Store one is FCP is for FCPX um, called X2 Pro which allows you to export easily um, Final Cut projects to Pro Tools um, the other is a FCPX project consolidation tool which can reduce the size of a, an FCPX project by 90%. So in a world where you're batting around projects between remote users, um, both of those have, have been um, very useful. Um, the other thing is there's a feature within uh, project parking which is used in Avid Nexus environments, which allows you to externalize a, an Avid project and version it in the, in the remote storage. And that could be cloud storage or it could be whatever you, you wish. Um, and that is a standard feature, and we'd not really marketed it that strongly. Um, and so what we did was we immediately wrote to all our project parking users and said, oh, by the way, there is this capability. You can externalize projects, you can make them editable, and you can make them versionable and manage the reintegration back into the original project. So a lot of our customers um, took advantage of that, which is great. Um, and we also f um, decided to reach out to people that had uh, project parking which had, their support had lapsed, so they were probably on an old version which didn't support cloud storage, for example. Um, and some of them said, oh, we've forgotten we've got the software, and thanks very much for letting us know. So we got them back on support, and we also got the, the product in operation, which was, which was great. And the other really useful thing is we have launched um, a project called PostFlux last year, which is uh, similar in a way to project parking, but for... Uh, Premiere Pro and After Effects. Um, and what we did was it, we actually took the storage library from uh, Project Parking and applied that as a plugin into PostFlux. So what it meant was we effectively got exactly the same capability to be able to version projects in the back in the backup. Um, and again, that's been you know, very interesting um, for our customers. And I, I think we've been able to help people get through at least the the initial bug out from their facilities into, you know, some constructive way of, of operating. Paul, oh, that's great. Uh, thank you for coming on Kit Plus TV. Uh, obviously, if people want to find out uh, more information about everything you guys do, they can uh, follow the link, which is on screen now. In the meantime, Paul, thank you very much for coming along. My, my Thanks, pleasure, Paul. and I look forward to seeing you at the next IBC. And now we come to the fourth part of our workflow, Move In, Deliver. And in the news this week, LiveView have unveiled its all-in-one production level field unit for live news and sports coverage. The LU800 combines multi-camera production and superior video and audio capabilities with mission-critical transmission in a native 5G unit. And staying remote, using TVU ne Networks, uh, using party line from TVU Networks, Core participants can achieve a unique level of communication and interaction from remote locations as though they were in the same physical studio while producing live and pre-recorded programming. PartyLine enables production personnel, talent and tools to collaborate remotely in real time with full HD video quality and perfectly synchronized audio and video. Now the Switch, the platform for the production and global delivery of live video has launched Mimic an on-demand cloud-based production as a service offering that gives access to remote production capabilities for live and virtual events of all sizes. Content producers can now leverage a combination of agile cloud production capability and global network reach to cost-effectively meet increasing demand for efficiency and flexible broadcast quality production and for social media engagement for any live event. And our final guest of the week is in the studio now. Hi to Eric Bolton from Zixi, who is coming to us from Patagonia right now. Thanks for joining us. So you've had some, some developments uh, in your product and uh, some news since the COVID-19 <laughs> pandemic and since NAB. Can you tell us a bit more? Absolutely. Thank you very much for having me on the show. Always a pleasure. Um, well, Zixi just continues to push forward, obvious, in the COVID world, we had our virtual NAB, uh, which, you know, went pretty successfully moving on with a number of folks 
and meetings that <clears throat> could get into 60 and 70 people, which we normally wouldn't see in the physical realm. Um, but Zixi has you know, continued to push and define the software defined video platform um, that allows any different protocol to come into the cloud, uh, come between clouds, manage all different edge devices, and very importantly, <clears throat> being able to manage different media processing platforms. So given the new recent remote work requirement that in many trends that were underway, the in case of emergency break glass has greatly accelerated how many people cannot go into a given building and how are you still gonna continue to run news. We await the return of sports, which is starting to ease back into the marketplace and of course, live entertainment. But in the live news cycle, which has now gotten quite dominant, we've seen um, a super high requirement for live editing. So Zixi allows you to acquire and bring those broadcast signals straight into a cloud and virtualized control room environment. <clears throat> From there, we have our Zen master for the Zixi enabled network control plane that allows you to orchestrate and oversee and confirm that I have both network statistics correctly, that I understand the quality of the streams going in with packet loss, but very important production things like audio, video, <clears throat> and things that would actually allow you to confirm that I had different camera sources and different pieces. So in that workflow, we've always been in contribution, distribution, and delivery. We're now really starting to see where production and post-production are becoming mission critical and live pieces. So in the world of television and attaining viewership and audiences in our cord cutting model, um, in the old world, you had the show, the promotion to tell you to watch the show, and the advertisement or subscription to pay for it. Audiences have now moved into a number of other consuming platforms, social media, Instagram, Facebook, and the like. So live editing platforms have become mission critical to being able to take and turn around content, melt clips, highlights, and have them in the consumer's hand while the actual show is going on and drive that viewership. So we've got two really strong partners in Blackbird and Vermont. Um, Blackbird's based out of England and Vermont out of Norway. We've done some very large uh, production deployments with them in various ver very big media news houses. And the, the workflows go as follow. You will take and acquire a signal off a live show in a studio. That goes into the cloud where it is written in typically HLS and goes into this editing system. And aligning that audio and video is very uh, precise and difficult from an engineering standpoint. You need to be able to match in the world that used to be time code and frame based. It's now entirely done math as you run it across HLS segment lengths, different manifests, all those types of things, and preservation of metadata. Being able in what would have been used as a lighter cutting editing tool is now becoming really a full-blown production suite of products that allow not only the ability to do the turnaround on the promo, but to archive, allow searchability, and allow a continuous set of production um, assets to be available for rebroadcast into the market. So. We, we see this as our having established over 13 years, a very broad ecosystem of Zixi integrated products, Zixi integrated service providers and Zixi users at the end base. And this live editing production is just a new critical way for the now virtual remote, virtual control room scenarios to be able to be enabled from anywhere, from any corner in the globe and still create the product and the news product, the sports product and entertainment product that consumers have always expected out of our cast. I'm kind of interested as, as, as well here. If, if someone decides they want to introduce this into their workflow, <laughs> is, is this something that you're, you can do hundred percent remotely? There's nothing, you know, is it a, a quick turnaround remotely? I, maybe that's a little bit of a, how long's a piece of string. No, but... it's a, I think you're, you're spot on. The idea is that in the software world, it's a software keys and some licenses. Um, we have been able to spin up and get instances up and running in a matter of hours. All of our partners, all the interoperability connections are there. Uh, Cloud-based instances, whether it's AWS, Azure, or Google, you know, these happen in a matter of minutes, not even hours. So part of the reason is that when people had to make this move um, and go from where 2,000, 3,000, 5,000 people would be going on to a given facility, and now there were 50 or 40 or 30 people there, um, people had to scramble to find the tools. We have been virtualizing, as I said, for well over a decade, um, being able to set these up and allow 
different camera feeds coming in so that directors, producers, and executives can all be able to see that from their home now or from wherever they have to be, and that the engineers and operators can participate virtually from the control rooms. This is a big breakthrough. And I would just say that in general, what we what probably would have taken us two years has just been uh, forced upon us globally in about two months. And I think that these trends, we've taken recent polls through that NAB cycle, um, 93% of all of our executives see this as the new normal going forward. We can see that they can see that both the cost savings and the speed of turnaround on the product, but they also are finding new ways that they can monetize as they're now getting, I think, a lot more creative and maybe due to a lack of other options. But uh, the virtualization is certainly driving innovation. And we can see now that with that you've really moved production, post-production and live editing as a separate set of workflows. It's a really powerful set in terms of how you can utilize a cloud infrastructure. Yeah, it really sounds like this this sort of enforced situation has, uh, has, 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 has made it your time. So yeah, thank you very much for coming in. Interesting, uh, interesting stuff. And we uh, will hope to see you at one of the shows in real life soon. We look forward to those days. Now, you may already know that we are encouraging user reviews to be sent in. All you have to do is simply turn the camera on yourself and do a short three to 10 minute review of that item of kit you just can't leave home without. Maybe what you love about it, or perhaps something that could be better. And of course, we are still paying a hundred pounds for those we use. So this is the part of the show where we look at kit, where it is, who is using it and how it's performing. And Lucian is here to give a 60 second rundown of the Canon EOS R. Hi there, my name is Lucian. I'm a filmmaker based in Romania and this is my Kit Plus 60 seconds review of Canon EOS R. This camera has proven to be a best buy for content creators and also for those who needed a big camera for C200 or other Canon cinema cameras. It features a high resolution 30 megapixel full frame CMOS sensor along with a Digic 8 image processor that offers a wide sensitivity range up to 40,000 ISO and 4K 30p video recording, sadly cropped by 1.7x. It also comes with the famous dual pixel AF system, which has 5655 selectable focusing points, movie digital IS to minimize camera shake, built-in C-Log for a greater dynamic range, and 4K 10-bit 4 to 2 output over HDMI for even better color control in post-production. Even though I agree that it lacks in places compared to its competition, it's by no means a bad camera and it has its place. If you want to know more, then check out my full in-depth review. The link is on screen now. Yes, do check out the full-length review of the Canon EOS R on our user reviews playlist. Now, if you want to send in your own review, the link is on screen now. We finish this week's show with our movers and shakers. This section reports on the people who have moved to new positions, had promotions, as well as organizations merging and collaborating together in new ways. Yeah, it's a bit quiet right now for obvious reasons, but Calorec has created a new position to further cement its reputation as a market lead in IP technology. Dave Sampson has taken on the role of network specialist to provide in-house expertise that strengthens Calorec's ability to support customers in the move to IP. Globecast has announced that Dennis Genevois and Olivia Zankel are moving into new marketing roles. Dennis, who joined Globecast in 2001, is now VP of Marketing Group. And Olivia, who joined Globecast in 2011, is now a VP of Communications. And I've spotted a new bubble on the street. The bubble agency have announced the appointment of Melanie Webb to the PR and marketing team. Melanie brings over 15 years of experience working in the production and distribution end of the broadcast sector at agencies including Premier PR and Franklin Ray. So that's it for this week. We hope you've enjoyed the show today. Do subscribe to the channel, follow us, hit the like button and make a comment if you wish. Thanks for watching and we'll see you virtually next Tuesday.